Hello and welcome to this Let's Play by a game by Postmodern Adventures. For some reason the intro logo is not shown. And the game is called An English Haunting. And my name is Sweemops and I will narrate this game for you. There are not that many options, a bit of volume, full screen, language English, text speed, normal. A very good thing in this game is uh, I've, I've played the demo so I already know what's happening in the first minutes and uh, you can click the dialogues away so simply you can take as much time as you need to read them which is very good for me because English is not my first language so I might get stuck on a few words because this is old English so let's go New game. Swoosh? London, 1907. Thus, with this method, we can determine the time of death within a margin of error of two hours. You should ask, Cooper. Me? Why not you? Hodges? Cooper? It would be interesting if you'd share your doubts with the class. Look at what you've achieved! Bah, coward! Professor Moore! Mm. Is it true that you and Professor Ward are devoted to hunting ghosts? My, you've been badly informed. We are devoted to studying them and not hunting them. Oh, what? What? Wow! It's nonsense. Ghosts don't exist. Do you have any conclusive evidence that can substantiate these, that statement, Mr. Cooper? There are myths. An invention of mankind to scare those of weak mind. Those of weak mind, huh? Alright. Let's see. How many of you believe in God? Mm -hmm. You can raise your hands. All of you. Well, perhaps you should be studying theology and not forensic medicine. You can lower your hands. I suppose you think the mere belief in him confirms his existence? Is there any supporting evidence? Any photographs? Have any of you seen him taking a stroll in Hyde Park? Has anyone talked to him? The Pope? Okay, let's set that witness aside for the moment. No one in history has been able to prove it. Only proof we have is faith, and that regrettably won't do. Look, gentlemen, neither I nor Professor Ward asserts that ghosts exist. We are cautious with regard to that matter, even if we have reliable witnesses, and there are a large number of cases. Are those arguments enough to accept is it this as fact? No. We would be falling into the same trap you fell into with respect to God. We investigate these claims with the best tools science has provided us. That is, the scientific method. A method I advise you to use before compulsively raising your hands and defend your beliefs. I don't think my father would agree with all that this blasphemy. Your father agrees with the idea that students from poorer classes should never be allowed into university. As well as agreeing to use child labor in his factories. So, with due respect, Mr. Turner, you can take your father's opinion and... Come in. I'm sorry to interrupt, Patrick. It's quite alright. What do you need? Look, um, the Dean wants to see you. Can't it wait? 
The lecture is almost over. It's a delicate matter, Patrick. Is it about Rose? No, no, it has nothing to do with Rose. What a relief, I was starting to worry. Talk to him, would you? I'll take care of the lecture. What were you teaching? The scientific method. Apparently these gentlemen don't get it. Very well. Well, gentlemen, the scientific method. One moment. What? Press F1 for instructions. Okay, left button interact top, select inventory, blah blah blah, okay, this is the usual stuff. Now let's see. Tom Lee trophies statue. Henry Carter, D. It was a gift from Raymond Baxter, former pupil and famous sculptor. This, it represents the certain cell deity celebrating the winter solstice. The board has threatened to retire, uh, to retire this pagan figure several times to the pupil's dismay. Every 21st of December, they fill the statue's bowl with whiskey and parade in front of it, paying their respects. A selection of the many championship sports trophies the university has won. I can see the polo trophy we won against Harvard in 84. I also remember that cup. We won it for cricket against Middlesex. Mr. Lee! Mr. Lee? Sorry, I didn't hear you. I was admiring the trophies. Did you know the university won the Greco Roman Wrestling Championship in 89? I did not. We haven't won since. Such a pity. There are more trophies in the hall. Why do you always find in, why do you why do I always find you in front of this cabinet? They're pretty, don't you think? Excuse me? The wrestling trophies. Ah yes, I suppose they are. And such a point of pride for the university, right? Yes, of course. Can I inquire you about your obsession with the trophies? I want to win one. I mean, I want the university to win one in my discipline, Greco Roman wrestling. What's preventing you from participating in the championship? I understand you're a good wrestler. Manager Taylor. He doesn't want to be embarrassed like in 96. What happened in 96? Oxford humiliated us. They defeated all our wrestlers. Manager Taylor doesn't want that to be repeated. And in his view, the most sensible thing to do is not to compete. It makes no sense, right? Especially if they have me. And the best wrestler university has had in years. I might be able to convince the manager. I very much appreciate it. Tell him Oxford won't stand a chance against me. I'm quick and relentless and strong. You look strong, yes. Of course I do. Strongest in the university. Do you want to see? Test me. There's no need, I trust you. Bring me a metal rod, I'll bend it for you. I don't have one, but don't worry. I'll do what I can to persuade Manager Taylor. Many thanks, Professor. Have a nice day, Mr. Lee. You too, Professor Moore. So, let's get on. We go into the door. Ah, Professor Moore. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon, Dean Carter. Victor Williams, a pleasure. Good afternoon, Professor Moore. You can get a chair from the back and it won't be necessary. This meeting will be brief. Explained effects, Dean Carter. Look, um, this week the university received a generous donation from the Metapsychic Investigations Program run by you and Professor Ward. Five thousand pounds. Five? That's amazing. It would be if not for a terrible event. All that money has disappeared from the Bank of England. What? We've demanded an explanation and they've confirmed the money was withdrawn yesterday by our colleague. What? We wanted to speak with Professor Ward, but he didn't appear today for his lectures. Let's try to remain calm, gentlemen. The professor might simply be... We've been trying to locate him all day. He's vanished. He's run off with the money. It's an unprecedented scandal. Are you sure it was Professor Ward? Someone could have impersonated him. There are witnesses. And the signature with which the money was withdrawn is undoubtedly his. Lest we forget, his whereabouts are unknown. We believe in presumption of innocence and respect it, but in this case, I am sorry, Professor Moore. This is the unvarnished truth. Who donated the money? We only know that it was a group of intellectuals from London society. Nothing else. It appears they had no intention of making it public. And given the circumstance, they prefer to keep it that way. Why would he do that? That is exactly what we are wondering. How could he withdraw the money? He's just a teacher. He shouldn't be authorized. At one time, he combined his teaching job with the position of deputy treasurer. That was years ago he resigned. Nevertheless, he was still registered at the Bank of London. We suspect he took advantages of that to commit his <laughs> crime. Get to the point, Dean Carter. Hmm. Yes. I'm sorry to tell you that as a result of this matter, the board has is considering eliminating your metapsychic investigations department. But it can't be. It is. My predecessor authorized the department because of the immaculate career of Professor Ward. Sir Archibald Ellsworth would roll over in his grave if he knew of this infamy. Surely you didn't presume to hope we'd keep this nonsense going after what happened, did you? I understand there's discomfort, Miss Professor Ward. But I'm part of the department too. It is fair that I should be blamed for facts for acts of which I'm not responsible. We know, Patrick, but... Patrick! You mean Professor Moore? And I would beseech you not to challenge the board. Hmm. However, as a courtesy to you, we wish your exit from the department to be as... Stop with this rubbish, Dean Carter. You have 72 hours to prove that your ghosts exist. If you don't present us with material proof by that deadline, forget about your department. 72 hours? That's not time enough to prove that no one has ever proven throughout the entire history of mankind. That is your problem. And express your thanks to Dean Carter, he's the one who's proposed it. If it were up to me, I would break up against that circus right now with my own hands. Damn it! We are the laughing stock of every university in the United Kingdom. Let them laugh all they want, Vice Chancellor Williams. They could display their ignorance. They only display their ignorance. Do you want some advice? 
forget and forget about those ghost fantasies and focus on your work as a teacher. You are the best teacher in the forensic medicine in all London. Focus on your work, for God's sake. This is a serious institution. Superstition has no place here, and neither do your progressive ideas. Are you aware that we have received complaints from some student fathers because of your radical ideas? What's wrong with being a progressive? Isn't it part of the university motto? Knowledge, improvement, progress? Don't be a wise RS with me. And remember who you're talking to. Seventy-two hours, Professor Moore. Prepare yourself to say goodbye to a fantasy that never had any place in an institution as respectable as this one. Seventy-two hours. Seventy-two hours, Henry. It's humiliating. Why didn't they just close the department immediately? I have more bad news to tell you. Really? There's more? Your department has been sealed. You won't be able to use any of the resources inside. Damn it, Henry. Couldn't you? I can't. If someone sees you here, they'll know it was me who conceded. That would put me in an awkward situation. The board is treating this matter very seriously. I don't want my position to be jeopardized. I beg you to understand. Yes, I do. I didn't mean to put you in a predicament. I'm sorry. I know the search for the great beyond is your life, but I'm sure adversity will stretch your intellects even further. I don't know how, but try to find proof, please. If it's strong enough, I'll show it to the board and they'll be forced to keep the department open. All right, Henry Carter. What kind of proof do you need to show to the board? The tangible kind, of course. Something so conclusive that it would convince the ignoramuses on the board to reconsider their beliefs. What a genius, huh? Who? Ah, Williams, yes. You know, he's never agreed with the university being involved in supernatural matters. Even if they are studied through science. What happened with the Professor Ward? What, what happened with Professor Ward was the perfect excuse to close down the department, don't you think? To him, it was like manna from heaven. It's what he's been waiting for since the beginning. I have no doubt about that. Williams is an old school teacher, quite literally. His closed mind belongs to the last century. Forget about him and focus on searching for proof of the supernatural activity. I will try to keep him at bay as much as I can. I still don't believe what Professor Ward did. Indeed, I'm still processing it myself. But the evidence is inequivocal, Patrick. An unequivocal war. I don't think I can do it without the professor. Don't underestimate yourself, Patrick. You are an extraordinary research researcher. I know time is not in your favor, in our favor, but perhaps pressure will push your brain into unsuspected limits. I better you, my friends. Any ideas? I remember you said you were working on an electromagnetic field booster. Well, it is more complicated than that in truth, but we could call it that. It served 
to stimulate supernatural activity, right? In theory, yes. You could use it in this branch investigation. Did you finish it? Does it work? It, I took it home so I could work on it during sleepless nights. It's only missing a piece and then I could give it a try. So what are you waiting for? Bong, a new location. Let's see what I can find. Time is of essence. Good luck, Patrick. So... How many of these have you written? The ones on the first shelf? And part of the second one too? Ghosts, Reality or Myth? By Dr. Henry Potter. Does Williams know about... know you wrote this one? Oh yes. Yes, even read it. Really? Well, actually, only the prologue. Then he gave me a lecture with more words than are in the book. Alright, alright. Glue. I wonder if Professor Ward is still in London. It's the th same thing I want to know. Books. Hmm. The Jewel of Seven Stars by Bram Stoker. The Great God Pan by Alpha Macon. In a Glass Darkly by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. Williams would be angry if he saw you devoted time to these readings while working. Ah, uh, these books? I just received an order from that new library near the London Archaeology Society. Archeo Archaeology Society. Do you know it? No. You should see for yourself. There are some genuine jewels. I'll do that. Okay. So, I think we are done here. It won't be able to prove the Great Beyond exists in such a short time without the Professor's help. I need to find him. Maybe I can discover something that will help me find him as at his home in Dorset Street. Another location. So, let's see. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook? Yes. Did they order you to remove the portrait of Professor Ward? What do you think? I think yes. Exactly. Who ordered it? Who do you think? Vice Chancellor Williams? Exactly. Do you need help? I see you finding it hard to remove a simple portrait. Do you think old Cookie is smart enough to take down a picture? Of course not. Exactly. Wait a moment. Doesn't mean I am or I'm not. You are smart enough to take down a portrait. Ah, good. Some genius thought it would be better to attach the paintings with glue instead of pearl. Instead of a pair of hook screws. In its defense, I'll say that not for anything in the world would I have suspected one of these illustrious professors was a filthy thief. You've already been informed, have you? Sadly. Who would have thought, huh? Though this. It's not like it comes as a total surprise frequenting the place as he did. But I will manage to take down his part with the note to you. One only needs to know how to apply force. Thus said Pythagoras, give me a place to stand and I shall move the world. That was Archimedes. You don't need to correct me. I'm not one of your pupils. What places did Professor Ward frequent? A pub, for one, in the East End. 
the Red Lion? Someone of his stature visiting such establishments. How embarrassing. And in the company of a tart. One moment, what tart? A courtesan, I guess. They seem quite close. She is surely a complete. His accomplice. Who do you. How do you know that? Rumors must travel as fast as bad news. I need to find that woman. She might know where I can find Professor Ward. If you find her, give her to the police. I already told you she surely has something to do with the money theft. Are you entirely certain that you don't need any help with the portrait? Do you want me to help you marking exams? There's no need to. Exactly. Carry on with your work. Okay, okay. Portrait. John Thomas Ogilvy. The best surgeon in London Hospital, taught here between 80, 80, 1880 and 1890. When he retired, he donated huge quantities of medical material which he still used today for internships. A portrait. Sir Philip Abercrombie. Illustrious professor of organic chemistry and candidate of the Nobel Prize in 1903 for his work on brain connections. Mr. Price? Professor Moore? Stop me? Uh, yes? Well, no. I'm reading a, a treaty on uh, medieval churches. And, uh, let me see. My dear Gregory, I am telling you the unvarnished truth. I believe I am now familiar with the extreme limits of terror and revulsion that a man can endure without losing his mind. Uh, I'm sorry, I am... Don't worry, Mr. Price. Don't be ashamed of reading Mr. J. M. R. James. He's a national treasure. Continue with your reading. Thank you, Professor Moore. Let's head back into the class. You need to be careful handling these anatomical skeletons because they are very fragile. Bing. There it is. It's full of flasks and test tubes. What is a flask of sulfuric acid doing here? It should be in the lab. Chalkboard. I believe it's time to get rid of these old eraser. So. has collected too much chalk powder, the eraser dirties instead of cleans. Okay. Acid. A flask of sulfuric acid. Very corrosive. Handle with care. Part of the arm of an anatomical skeleton in one-to-one -one scale. One on the top is Atlas of Human Anatomy by Dr. Oswald de Vries. I use it to illustrate my lectures. The one on the bottom is The Empty House and Other Ghost Stories by Algernon Blackwood. It serves me to help me evade them. Yep. The four first drawers are full of anatomy prints. The rest are intended for school materials.
our king, Edward the Seventh, crowned with six years ago. Crowned six years ago. Better late than never, he must have thought. Queen Victoria's reign was so long, and her personage is still so present that no one dares to take down her portrait yet. Oh, wow. Frank Lewis. Frank? Bad news, right? Worse. The board is threatening me to close down the Metapsychic Investigations Department if I don't present irrefutable proof within 72 hours. Proof of what? Of the existence of the Great Beyond? Damn idiots! It's an impossible time frame. How dare they? What despicable Williams will end up getting what that he wants? That despicable Williams will end up getting what he wants. What do you think of that Professor Ward did? Are you asking me if I believe he's innocent? Is he? Do you think? I think neither of us are answering a single question. I don't know, Patrick. Nelson Ward is famous for being eccentric and impulsive. But that, of course, doesn't make him a miscreant. So, do you think he's innocent? Yes, the evidence of the crime is inequivocal. Cool. Though, simultaneously, I believe that if he committed such misconduct, he must have had a good reason. Not just a financial one. What reason? I cannot begin to fathom. I only hope his mistakes, his makes, this makes some sense. Have you seen any ghosts lately? God willing, this would be easy, right? How long has the Metapsychic Investigations Department been running? Three, four years? Four. And they want to solve the great mystery of life after death within 72 hours? Neither, neither want to nor intend to. If I have been given the time frame, it is because Henry interceded. If only you could succeed. I'd like to see the face of those scrabbed Jesus when you show them undeniable proof. I think I didn't know Professor Ward enough. We had a very close relationship, but it was purely professional. I don't know a single thing about his life, apart from his, him being chief coroner of Scotland Yard before becoming a teacher. If I had taken even a mild interest in him, I might have detected signs of what he would do. Don't punish yourself with that, Patrick. Nelson was very reserved. I doubt anyone in the faculty really got to know him. I don't know how I can face research against the clock. I don't want to be untactful, but... That's an endeavor doomed to fail. I mean, to this day, no one has been able to find any conclusive evidence of the existence of the Great Beyond. Perhaps in the future, we would resolve the matter, but not in such a short time. I need to find the professor. I can't do this alone. We are, we are a team. But how? How about asking for help from the British Society of Paranormal Studies? I doubt they would assist. Neither the professor nor I are welcome there. Ah, oh, because of the damned article. What about Richard? He always supported you. And he could be a valuable ally in this quest. Charles? He's not in London at the moment. Yeah, damn. Any ideas that might help my research? No, now that I think about it, Nelson mentioned having found a place worth investigating. Do you remember where it could be? Hmm. I think it was located in central London. Uh, maybe. I don't recall. I was having a busy day. 
when you told me about it and I didn't pay enough attention. I'm sorry, I'm not helping. Don't worry. Thank you for always supporting me. I know of only two people who could prove the existence of the Great Beyond. One of them is Nels. You are the other. So you shall always have my support in everything you do. I should get going. If I can do anything for you... I understand, Frank. I appreciate it. Okay. Let's leave then. So... Our situation is not great. Morse House, University, Dorset Street, or the Red Lion? Hmm. Let's go to Patrick Moore's house. Lord Beckwood? Oh, Rose. You did not mention there was a family gathering. We came here as soon as we heard. We are very disappointed in you, Patrick. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Huh? Do I have to repeat myself, Patrick? Your nonsense has finally exhausted this family's patience. It wasn't enough to embarrass us with your ghostly fantasies, but you ended up involved in a robbery. At the university, no less. And at the university, no less. No one has ever defiled the Blackwood family name until now. One moment. Involved? I had nothing to do with... Silence, miscreant. The only words I will tolerate leaving your lips are an apology. An apology? But I have done nothing wrong. Excuses. You should face the facts, Patrick. We have decided to an unanimous agreement to cut ties with you. As of now, bid farewell to my daughter, to us and to this house. I live here. In my daughter's house. Therefore, it belongs to the Blackfoot family. And it became a tainted house from the moment you came to live here in sin with my daughter, you seductive devil. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. Rose has nothing to say. Dad is right, Patrick. It would be the best for us to go our separate ways. What? And there will be no wedding, of course. Is that it? Is this how you end three years of blissful engagement? Blissful? Ha! Do you think Rose was happy with you? That is not all. As a major shareholder in the bank, I have taken the liberty of pulling some strings to freeze your bank account. You will not be able to withdraw your money until you have proven your innocence of this crime. What? Is that even legal? I have all the right in the world. But you had best but you had best be prepared to spend your entire year's salary as a professor to afford a lawyer if you are intent of challenging it. That is all this family has to say. Hobson? Sir. Bring that briefcase and return it to Mr. Moore. I do not want the devil's accessory in my house. At once, sir. Are you going to leave me on the street with just my briefcase? What about the rest of my belongings? Hobson will make sure they reach you as soon as you provide us with the contract address. I don't have anywhere to go. That is no longer a concern of the Blackwood family. Oh, 
I'm sorry about this situation, Mr. Moore. You don't deserve this. Thank you, Hobson. I appreciate that you are the only sensible person in the Blackwood family household. What are you talking about? Hobson, hand in the briefcase and return to your place. Hobson would escort you would escort you to the door, but I believe you know the way. Hold on, Patrick. I want to give you something before you go. I hope it's not the engagement ring. It's pure gold. Take this. It would be rude to receive suitors with your portrait on the table. Oh, Rose, please. Is this truly what you want? You know, I defied my family when they opposed our relationship. And you also know how uncomfortable I feel whenever my friends discuss what you do. I'm a professor, Rose. You hunt ghosts, Patrick. I can endure all that for love. But you have been forsaking our relationship for too long. You devote all your attention to the dead and neglect the living. And that, my love, I can't bear. Bear. <laughs> I can't be you. Okay. So I'm grateful to my parents for opening my eyes. I know I've been very busy lately working on my prototype. And I'm sorry for what I've put you through. We can fix this, Rose. Look deep into your soul. Listen to your heart. What does it tell you? Bam. Extra suspect in Canton Town murder arrested. His name is. Oh, I cannot read this first. Okay, so this will be the end of part one. See you in the next one.